game, I'd say even harder because he's not able to win the lane phase through Summoner Spell. Yeah, and maybe they can get some sort of advantage out of the laning phase and start split pushing, but one thing that Prey is really extraordinary at is his use of Hawkshot. And that was a major factor in the, the first win against CLG was how well Prey was timing his hot, hot shot, watching the enemy jungler so. consistently, and being able to set up plays on the mid lane from the side lanes as a result. So that's something that we usually don't see on the screen, more just on the mini map, but hmm. it's something you should be keeping an eye out for this game because Prey is so good at timing it. I'm wondering how this mid lane matchup is going to go between. Uh... Nagne's LeBlanc and Kuro's Vagar. I mean, when LeBlanc comes in with the distortion, that's a dash. So that gets caught in the cage. Correct. But the jump out is a blink, so it won't be. So yeah. Kuro's going to need to be really fast and kind of predicted to have any chance of catching. Yeah, basically LeBlanc has holds all the cards in that matchup because yeah. there is an arm time on the cage. Uh, basically, Nagne will always be able to predict if he's going to get caught in the event horizon. And Kuro can't actually reactively use it because if he uses it after Nagne has burned the damage, he can still get out freely. The only thing you can do is place the Event Horizon on the point where the Distortion was cast from right. so that if he swaps back, he stuns himself then. I mean, he picked himself into the matchup, so clearly he's got some confidence against this LeBlanc. We'll see if he can follow it up. Gorilla harassing Pickaboo. Pickaboo plays him in. There's the third. Pickaboo forced to flash away. Yep. Doesn't want to get eaten by that Tom Kench. Well, really early troubles here. Pikachu is trying to walk a little bit too close to that brush and definitely is punished for it quite quickly into this game. And, you know, they wanted to have some sort of advantage here with the Callista start using that lane bully status that this AD carry has. And they're just not going to get it now with a flash down. Yeah, getting bullied right now by Prey and Gorilla. Score coming down. Only mm -hmm. two CS so far for Arrow. Yeah, Ash's early laning phase is actually tremendously underrated. It's one of the strongest laners in the right situation, and it was made even stronger here by the fact that Gorilla and Prey uh, did Gromp about five seconds faster than Arrow and Pickaboo did the Krugs, so they very easily got level two first. And as we saw, it wasn't properly respected by Pickaboo and Arrow, so he had to use his Flash while he was out leveled by the opponent bottom. Lane. That's actually a pretty big mistake there. If you know, you should know that you're going to be out level two, and you should almost never get caught as a level one versus level two in this lane situation. Oh, definitely. Standard lanes though, continuing on, score. Moving up towards the top, they want to be a little bit careful because they know Hojin was lurking around in the enemy jungle. There he is, score finding him, going to do a little bit of damage on his way out. Actually, Nagne coming up, there's the flash, the flash in response from Hojin. Meanwhile, Someday keeps Smet up in the top lane, but he may regret it. Smeb comes in, can he get the kill? Not quite, he flashes, tries to go over, but the Dead. turret, the turret hits him, and first blood goes to Someday. Smeb getting a bit over eager there. And actually, that kill was caused by Nogne's teleport because Smeb could have retreated backwards, yep. but the teleport LeBlanc secures first blood. He doesn't get anything out of it, so he loses mid lane pressure, but the top lane matchup is much more important well, for the team. I am so surprised that you'd see that level of all in from Someday because he was really willing to scrap, but Nogne had the time in the mid lane to make the teleport up there, so it's all coordinated. We can see there's no Vagar right there, and uh, so LeBlanc easily able to respond to this, walking up the river and then using the TP. Yeah, Smeb was able to outplay the first Decimate by getting inside the ring, and he's confident enough to do the all in because the junglers were engaged down bottom. Uh, that flash forward, though, was the instant Smeb regretted his decision <laughs> and gives <laughs> up first blood. I've made a terrible mistake. Meanwhile, down in bot lane, things uh, still progressing. Arrow pretty far behind in CS yet, but he has had a chance to catch up just a bit. And someday, wow, not oh, wasting any time going aggressive onto Smeb again. He's got that double Doran, so he's got the uh, Ruby Crystal, actually, too. So he's got the sustain that Smeb is kind of lacking right now. Yeah, with that one item advantage, it's going to be very difficult for Smeb to walk up on the minion wave right now. So here's Hojin ready to help. Uh, Smeb trying to bait someday back. Hojin comes in. There's a knockup. They know that Darius has no flash. Ward's thrown down, someday in a lot of trouble. Can they take him up before he gets to the turret with that slow? I think they can, the heal was Ooh. nearly enough. Someday pulls him in. Oh, and he gets one for one. Someday already doing work on that Darius. Just getting oh, the decimate man. off cooldown, hitting two people, getting the heal in was enough to buy him time to get back under the turret. And I love this Fiora Darius matchup. It is so fun to watch yeah. in this top side. Smeb will get a kill in response, but it's been a wild one so far. It really yeah. feels like Fiora Darius is 
the essence of what they say when we call it a skill matchup. Yeah. Because it really depends on how they play, it depends on the item timings, different breakpoints come out throughout the game that gives either one an advantage. And that was honestly a perfectly timed gank by Hojin, but someday executed well enough in the escape that he traded the kill back. That gank almost equalized that lane entirely, but instead they just trade a kill and someday will maintain a small advantage. Yep, pretty much picks up that long sword while Smed picks up his Ruby Crystal. Meanwhile, a little bit of action in the bot lane. And this one could get a bit bloody overall, too. I mean, coming into this, KT and Koo, besides SK Telecom, had the highest kills per game, the lowest deaths per game. So they really know how to make the plays that result in kills. Well, not only that, though. Oh, Level six, six. Six. oh time to dive. Yep. Gonna go this will take turret first so that they can stack up bleed stacks if they want to go. But they're uh, a little sloppy on awkward. the initiation there. Yeah, somebody took a couple of shots right there walking back under the turret. So they're not going to be able to pull that one off quite yet. All right, that's stepping right there. Yes, that that's enough poke that they're going to want to pressure Smim off this turret or force a Rek'Sai to come up elsewhere. They haven't had eyes on Hojin, so there's going to be a little bit of trepidation on this gank. Uh, they're wondering if Rek'Sai is going to come through, but they have all the entrances covered, so they, they think this is pretty much a safe dive if they want to go. Should be. Score is right there. But yeah, again, they don't quite know where Hojin is, and they're actually going to give that one up for the moment. Recall for someday, so will they decide to go for it? Smith coming down and... It doesn't look like anything's going to happen right now. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, Kuro has fallen a little bit behind in CS, but you kind of expect that in this matchup. And when it comes to the early game, we, we briefly touched on this before, but in the first 15 minutes of the game, Ku was up 3.2 kills for every death that they had, and KT was up 2.25 kills for every death that they had in the group stage. <laughs> wow. So One of those things will change. One of those things will change, <laughs> but... They like to fight. They've been very successful at acquiring kills early. These are the top two teams at World so far in terms of kill-to-death ratio pre-15 minutes. Someday, going at it again. Beautifully done. Up. Yeah. This cuts. matchup is almost entirely decided on two things. It's the riposte timing by the Fiora, and also Darius being able to land the outer ring of his decimate. Whichever one of those goes more beneficial for either the Fiora or the Darius is generally what swings the matchup. True enough. Yes, nearly dead even though. Someday protecting himself against some ganks, which you know Hojin really wants to make happen. I don't know. We seem to have hit a bit of a lull in the action for now. Yeah, but at the moment, Ku is actually swapping the lanes, and the question will be whether this was scouted out by KT because they haven't uh -oh. pinged anyone missing. Here Are you come. looking for a challenge? Whoa, the entire Ku team almost showing up. There's Nagne as well, came in with his teleport. Someday is going to get taken out, and now they're going to go after Nagne. Can't quite catch him though. Whoa, big barrel from score, and Kuro takes a couple big turret hits. Who might stick around to take down this turret? But man, everybody wanted a piece of Smeb in that top lane. Well, they needed to shut him down, right? He was getting too much of an advantage, so they send all five people up into that top side to go ahead and make a play right here. Uh, we did see a Gorilla hit that level six, try and come in very quickly, and they caught someday unaware. And now KT scrambling to get this turret. Yeah. yeah. KT is now trying to respond to Ku's great lane swap that sent five people up top. I think overall, the fact that KT was able to keep two people down in the bottom lane means the gold's going to stay pretty close. Mainly that gank top lane was Ku's way out of losing matchups. They were losing that top lane extremely badly. It's actually something the Flash Wolves did against Ku when Ku had a huge amount of pressure early on in the game, is they lane swapped their AD carry and support top lane later on in the game to equalize it. Now they're trying to swap back, but they might be a bit out of position. Oh, it's fighting time in the bot lane. Arrow comes in, throws Pickaboo on towards Prey. Prey eaten by Gorilla. Gorilla, a lot of trouble, has to pop that E. Throws himself over to the other Ku players coming in. Nagne backing away. Smab with the first kill on the Nagne. Ku with an early lead in this fight. Someday an arrow in a little bit of trouble. Pickaboo already on the way out. And Someday gets knocked up by Hojin. Drexai, it's going to be another kill. Smeb grabs it yet again. All five members of Ku are always in the same <laughs> place. I mean, Gorilla coming in with the uh, Tom Kenchold in the first fight, this time just being there as Ku is rapidly just alternating the sides of the map, trying to catch out KT, and it's working. They're going to get the first dragon. And I'm wondering what is necessarily going through KT's heads right now, because they have been the team that wards the most, and they have been the team that's gone upgraded Yellow Trinket on their mid laner every single game. But this match, they've gone Sweeper on 
the LeBlanc. They have a very late Sightstone timer on score. He hasn't even begun to build it yet, and they are actually losing because they're not tracking where Ku is on the map. They are not doing the things that they have done throughout all of the group stage in order to become 5-1 and get here, and they're getting punished because of it. Well, this is looking good for Ku because KT has been opting into these fights. The, the bad side of what Ku is doing is that you try and load five people into one lane, and you lose pressure across two lanes on the map. So it's been functional because KT has been willing to scrap out with them. If KT starts to play a little bit more defensively, they can yeah. punish with turrets. Well, I think to keep in mind too, is the last time these two teams met, Ku did win the first game as well, and KT still took the series. And I feel like specifically though, if KT wants to be able to play defensively, they need to have the vision because they're being surprised by these five-man ganks, and they can't accurately ga gauge that there are actually five people there. So until they get the proper wards up on the map, I think who will continue to be able to roam five people and create numbers of damage. And we saw the dragon stats come up there too. KT, actually, surprisingly, they're five and one in the group stage, but they actually lost more dragons than they secured. Meanwhile, the Ku Tigers, much more dragon-focused, about two to one ratio on those dragons, secured versus lost. So KT really needs to tighten up their control over that objective. And if you're Ku coming in, you, you start to think, hey, maybe we should prioritize this, try for that five dragon stacks, and that's what's going to get us the win here. I wouldn't be surprised. It is odd, though, because KT, you know, did prioritize those dragons so much in Korea and Champion Summer. Was, so to see them kind of play a bit of a different style here at Worlds, uh, maybe something that a lot of people are expecting. And I think Ku's got it right as far as trying to fight and control those early on. Doesn't look like KT's going to be able to steal their blue. Who's going to take that one for Kuro? We have this big swing in the top lane, too. All of a sudden, Smeb starting out 0-1. Now four kills, 4-1, and, and they've managed to keep Someday down. And I think what they're doing is so smart, because it's when Someday starts to get ahead and become that unstoppable split pusher that mm -hmm. KT really gets rolling. So they are just throwing a wrench in the gears there. It seems, too, that, like, Pickaboo and Score have not been able to do what Pickaboo and Score are kind of known for doing, which is getting the enemy jungle, put down a lot of wards. You look at the map right now, a lot of, not a lot of KT wards on the Ku side. And the thing is, is these two teams know each other really, really well. Ku knows exactly what KT wants to do with their jungle and support, and they're doing a great job of stopping it. I would agree. Going to get a free turret right here. No defense. Yep. Arrow popping down That'll help. from the jungle, but... Easily taken, and we get a freeze on the other side, though. Yeah, at this point, though, Ku will need to get some actual deep wards uh, if they want to make their next move. They've been able to hawk shot things down uh, a little bit. I think they're mainly able to get that turret. Was that the Abyssal Voyage out Used to get, to get out? To the so, yeah, what oh. happened was uh, Ku pushed forward right there. They didn't have a lot of wards in the river, so, so they, they were afraid they're getting. They were afraid that they were going to get collapsed on, especially since LeBlanc's teleport was up. So they go ahead and use the Tom Kenshaw just to secure the turret and get out. Makes sense. And this is what I love about this Abyssal Voyage is, as this tournament has progressed, we've seen more and more use of the Tom Kenshaw. It started coming in, nobody use it really using it in an interesting or a flashy way, but we're seeing more and more ways to use it as the players get more comfortable with this champion. Well, between two teleports and Rexile and Tom Kenshaw, who can basically yep. be anywhere on the map oh, they and want uh, any Ash arrow, you know, whatever. Yeah, exactly. I think that may, may be one of the reasons Nogne, instead of going for Ignite, went for teleport, because they were realizing that they were so outscaled in globals here, and yeah. that that's a large part of what's been winning teams games here at World. So they're trying to keep up a little bit, although I feel like KT is shooting themselves in the foot a little bit early here, not upgrading yellow trinkets early, going sweeper on LeBlanc when Nagne has been doing nothing but upgraded warding trinkets, and they are getting a little bit out roamed on, and they are going to be more vulnerable to picks, I feel like, because who has the initiation tool with the Ash? Yeah, yep. They definitely do. Uh, and we're getting into the point now. We talked about 15 Whoa, to 30. A little bit of action on to Kuro, but Nagne not really finding anything. Pikaboo not. Landing any hooks. Not the flash, though. That's pretty big. Helps, certainly, against a champion like Vega that doesn't have a lot of maneuverability. So 15 minutes. This is where KT, <laughs> they like to farm a yeah. lot. This is where Ku likes to kill you. So we'll see who gets the better end of this, because KT has been a great team at farming all three lanes. But Ku, this is when they want the plays to happen. They want to fight you. They want to skirmish. And KT, the, the mass wards are starting to come down as they regain control over the top side river. Yeah. Now things are starting to swing just a bit, but they've got to protect this mid lane turret. If Ku takes this out, along with the bottom lane, they'll have really good dragon control. KT, though, going to deny them for now. Someday it looked like he wanted to be sneaky, but nope. Hard to be stealthy when you're dribbling a basketball. <laughs>
too noisy. Sorry. Especially trying to dribble it in water. I'm not actually sure how that you works. You don't see James Bond <laughs> dribbling a basketball or anything like that. You don't see anybody dribbling a basketball in a river. No. Well, you see people try, but they fail pretty miserably. Oh, well, I'm sure they'll invent something for James Bond. If he wants to play basketball in a river, he can. Yeah, they invented an invisible car. I'm sure bouncing yeah. a ball on water isn't that <laughs> How difficult. hard can it be? Come on, Q, get on that. Seriously. Well, someday, just pushing up to the top lane as well. Yeah, I will say, though, we mentioned the 10 to 15 minute jump that Ku had so heavily in the group stage, the lar largest of any team. They actually averaged 2,300 gold advantage specifically between 10 minutes and 15 minutes. And we're thinking, ah, it's just because of the group stage. They had a 2,000 gold jump between the 10 and 15 minutes against KT in this game. Uh, they have been very good at making that nice rotation that leads to a team fight win against pretty much every team at Worlds, and they did it again here against KT. And here comes Dragon. Second one just came back. Wondering where the first one went. He'll probably find out soon. Can KT take it, though? You, know, you think the Dragons will stop just flying back into that one pit? <laughs> it's, like, there's, it's like a pile of dragon bones at the bottom. Maybe they shouldn't be here. There's like a big dragon cave underneath, and there's some dude who's like, all right, who wants to go to Dragon Fun Land? And they're like, me, me. And he's like, George, it's your turn. And they open the door, and he flies out, and everyone's like, oh, I'm so jealous. I'll be next. <laughs> Little did they know. It's really kind of messed up when you think about it. And then like 25 seconds later, it is dead on average <laughs> because these teams get it so quick. See, nobody knows that, though. The dragon's underneath the dragon, but they don't know about this. Somebody should tell them. Yeah, the cruelty to animals is pretty it's it's pretty real. It's horrible. Isn't it Disgusting. a mystical beast? Well, mystical beasts can be animals. That's true. What are you, mystical beastist? <laughs> we just need, need a new one. People for the ethical treatment of mystical beasts. <laughs> huh. The bee. Pee temp. <laughs> Doesn't have quite the same ring. Not really, here, no. Well, nobody really willing to go for the dragon so far right now. Who just grabbing their blue buff, and we'll see if they can move around it. They've got wards down, but... KT paying a lot of attention to the map right now. Yeah, the item breakpoints aren't as in the favor of a team with a lead as they kind of should be. There's already a Negatron cloak on Nogme. Oh. Uh, a lot of this would actually have to be a pick created by Ku, which is why I think they're waiting. Ku doesn't have the advantage if they just group up and, and dare them to fight, but if they can actually get a catch, uh -oh. uh, or will it be Gorilla getting oh, caught? Oh, Gorilla may have gotten caught here, but here comes Prey, teleports all over the place. Gorilla Prey on the run, Kuro and Smeb coming in to challenge immediately onto Someday, who just gets destroyed. KT on the run already. We'll see how far Ku wants to chase, but they can really turn on that dragon anytime, and that's exactly what they're gonna do. Yeah. Really sure what Someday was thinking. They're know. right into five Wanna be hero. Being. Yeah, one of the strangest things about double TP on both sides is you're never 100% sure who is coming in when yeah. every teleports are there. <laughs> it's true. Uh, so maybe he didn't think he was going to come in right onto a baby cage from Vagar. <laughs> but specifically, that's one of those teleports you almost have to cancel because his team was not in a position. He should have seen the beginning of the Ren Horizon because he was stunned the instant he came in. And it's fourth death there for someday. He's actually getting punished Well, he hard. was playing so well in the early game, but now I really feel like a lot of desperation coming in from someday here in the mid lane and he should feel desperate with KT falling farther behind, losing that second dragon. It's got to be uh, starting to make him sweat a bit. Oh, Gorilla, he's fishing. I feel like fights that begin by Tom Kench taking damage almost always favor the Tom Kench. My, my experience through all of the Tom Kench games at Worlds. Relish, isn't it? That fight, uh, Nagne ended up blowing his TP too, trying to come in from behind. Really disjointed, poor engage there from KT. Well, you gotta wonder how experienced they are with playing with this double teleport. It was never a huge thing in Korea in the summer. It's something that uh, I feel like the teams from that region are still kind of learning a bit about. Yeah, it's definitely something that many of the teams here at Worlds from across regions have had to take a lot more seriously. We thought this is the way the mid lane was going to go at the World Championship, just yeah. given the champion pools and the opportunity to do so. What I feel like is so interesting about this matchup is the double teleport was more uh, for the controlling mages that don't have solo kill potential. I didn't necessarily expect to see teleport on an assassin. Uh, yeah, you think a, you'd still want to go with something like Knight instead. Yeah, because then you can outpressure the person teleporting and stop his ability to TP. One wonders. Especially since they have to kill this Vagar early in the late game, and they could do that with a LeBlanc flank, because being a little bit sneaky on the side. Using the control of the vision is not going to be quite so much of an option in this particular matchup. Yep. KT pressuring that mid lane now. Never mind, they're not. Well, they're trying to, but we've kind of been over this discussion of 
Vagar and how I think it's going to be a massive pick throughout the rest of the world because he has almost everything that is currently valued in the game. Great late game scaling, great siege, great wave clear. He can assassinate other squishes coming at him. He's a strong team fighter. The only weakness is his mobility and he is attackable in that sense. But if you're positioned well uh, in the hands of a good player, it is one of the most powerful mid lane picks. Yeah, we talked about him kind of as a new Victor, a little bit less mobility, but uh, mm -hmm. counterbalancing that with some insane single target damage and an ability to punish you know, AP champions both in the mid and the top lane should they come through. Well, man, if you get hit by an Ash Arrow, that's just like a golden ticket for Vagar to walk up and destroy you. I, I mean, instant death. It, yeah. You're not living through getting hit by an Ash Arrow if no. two Tigers fire it because they're going to chain it straight into Event Horizon, and that's going to be it. Yeah, yeah, and they're going to take the mid lane turret. And that's the siege right there, Event Horizon around the turret. So if you want to yep. walk up to Wave Clear, you're walking into your own death. Unless you can set up flanks, but at the time, KT doesn't even have their teleports up right now, so a really smart move for Ku to siege in that particular situation. Ku is actually very vulnerable to flanks, especially if they're using their Event Horizon in a siege situation, but they were very safe to do so in that situation. Ku's doing such a good job at moving around the map in a group, too. And we talked about, you know, when you move in a group like that, you let the other lanes get behind, but They've got enough pressure across lanes now that they've uh, got the time to do that, I guess, and make it work. Well, the pushing pressure really isn't there for KT. I suppose they have to try to match Ku, don't they? Arrow's still waiting on that Ruinance Hurricane, so he can't wave clear as fast as he would like, so this is a great time for Ku just to set up this Vagar Siege. Yep. Look at the kiting right there. There's just nothing coming in. You shoot out that volley, you put down the Event Horizon, and there aren't very many options. It really is up to someday of Nagne to try and get a flank here. And Arrow has to farm right now because that Ruinance Hurricane is so important to controlling the minion waves so that they can't, Ku just can't group so freely. Hmm. Can that even really stop the siege, though? I mean, the attack range on Callista, if, if Vagar walks up and again, you know, puts that Event Horizon down near the turret, can you get close enough to even clear the wave? It, it's mostly about clearing the side waves so they can't just group with no punishment. They have to, they will be forced to lose minions onto their own turrets if that's going to be the case. Yeah, KT has to be ahead of the play of the five people grouping in the mid lane and creates split lane pressure and that in turn can set up the threat of teleport flanks. If KT ever gets in a situation where the side lanes aren't pushed once again, they're basically losing that intermittent. Makes sense. Praying Gorilla pushing up this top lane a little bit, taking a, a detour to make sure that the minions are going their way. And KT just kind of seems afraid to try to really push out at all. They've got a couple wards a little bit into the top jungle for Ku, but it's not really doing them a lot of good right now. Dragon in one minute. And if Ku gets three in a row, KT has really got to start being terrified. They're worried now. They'll be terrified if they, that third dragon goes over the two Tigers. Yeah, especially since they, they've got the Gragas engage going for them, but that's about it. Yeah. And Ku just has so much heal and kiting potential that fighting around that dragon is a very unattractive option for KT. And the blue buff. Oh, goes to Hojin. Whoops. Hojin. Uh, uh, we actually haven't seen that much. Wah, wah. No. Yet. Yeah, it's actually been surprisingly the first infrequent. One I, I think remember. this is the first one I've seen. Well, congratulations to Hojin. First one to steal the blue from his mid laner. Well, at least he can get cooldown reduction. I know. Congratulations. <laughs> really need More tunnels. You know. Oh, see, yeah. that's exactly what Kuro wants to do oh. to Nagne. As soon as yeah. he distorted in, he placed the event horizon right on the start of the distortion. So Nagne was either trapped inside. Uh, or he had to go back and stun himself, ends up burning his passive on it. Yeah, very nice. Lost a lot of health on that. Ku Tigers sieging that tier two in mid lane. Now Score trying to come from the side, but he's getting zoned a bit. Now the teleport. That's right, teleport coming in, and Agne tries to do a bit of damage, but Gorilla just blocks it. Just eats Hojin right up. Once Digs again. Him right out of the ground, I guess. That's an example of why Tom Kench is spectacular against pick compositions. As soon yeah. as someone was beginning to get caught, Gorilla could just waddle over and completely stuff that attempt. Now, Ku is set up in the mid lane with good split push pressure in one lane. They can actually threaten either Dragon or Baron because they are set up so actively in the mid lane. And they've already burned Nogne's teleport, which is quite honestly the main flank at this point since someday is yet to pick up home guards and is needed consistently in the lane so he doesn't have time to go back to base to charge his home guards and get off a good Darius flank. Yeah. I kind of feel bad for Rek'Sai. You know, you're burrowing and you're cool and then some guy shows up that can not only burrow like you can but can take people along for the ride in his mouth. 
It's like, great, well, <laughs> I guess I'm kind of boring now if I'm Rek'Sai. Looks like Third Dragon being started by the Ku Tigers. And will KT be able to stop this? They need to stop this. If there was a time to stop it, it would be now because yep. they have not got a Score. pick before the Dragon. Coming in, waiting to try to smite it away. Ku breaking out for the moment. Oh, Score takes the Dragon for KT Rolser. Arrow comes in onto Arrow. He's going to cleanse it immediately. And KT trying to kite away. Kuro gets bounced in, though. He's in trouble. No, gets picked up by Gorilla, of course, but knocked over the wall. In fact, Someday got that kill. Oh. And now KT comes in. A huge apprehend by Someday. And KT all over the Ku Tigers. Even the challenge from Smab wasn't enough, and there goes Gorilla. That is nearly a clean ace for KT Rolster. Credit to KT Rolster for taking a fight and playing well. Yeah. But a big mistake by two Ku Tigers to not prep that fight with vision or a pick of some kind. They just allowed KT a free attempt to Dragon Steel and then a full straight up 5v5 engagement. You oh. can't respond with the arrow here. So the event horizon goes down, it just zones out while the dragon dies. And at this point, Ku gets very greedy. With the Event Horizon down, shooting the arrow is not as attractive, especially when it hits the Callisto running cleanse. And right here, Pickaboo zones him out. Kuro gets hooked, so poor positioning from the Vagar. Gorilla tries to save him, but he just dies inside the belly from the oh, damage someday. over time. And then someday comes yeah. in wow. with a huge apprehend. Big body slam right into a three-man apprehend, and it is lights out for the Ku Tigers. Someday score and the hurricane from Arrow did so much work in that fight, but specifically, it was just a very poorly played set up by yep. the Ku Tigers. They did. They lost all of their zone control, and we mentioned how they're vulnerable to flanks because they actually have a fairly, uh, not a very mobile team composition with the Vagar and the Ash, but they have tremendous setup. They sacrificed their setup, and they allowed KT to then use the mobility of the Blanc Rockus and Callista to get in on them. But now they're oh. trying to shut down Someday yet yeah, again. Trying to save Smep. Someday in a little bit of trouble very on the run carries. now. Ku is all over him, and he is out of there. Even the ultimate can't save him, and Smeb. Topped off with that heal after the kill. He's 5 2 2 now, so still doing okay. Gold lead is in favor of KT. They do have the pressure right now, but they'll need a little bit more from that. We're able to pick up the Baron, too, and all that. Baron up minions, Ash Arrow down, so they're feeling pretty safe about this siege. Yep. Jason Ku, whoop, there we go. Score. A little bit of trouble, knocks Smeb away, has to burn his ult just to stay alive. So, how much can KT get done with this Baron buff? Well, that's going to be the question. They already wasted it a little bit by uh, sacrificing Someday right there, putting him in a vulnerable position where he could get killed. And so now we've got a little bit of waiting to do. One thing that's a bit interesting here is we haven't seen the Aegis come out yet. Score has intriguingly decided to build a Frozen Heart in this huh. game, which hmm. I really don't think is the priority when we're playing against a Vagar. I mean, clearly they're worried about Smeb, but still, yeah, late game, that Vagar is going to do extreme amounts of damage. I can kind of understand it. Uh, if Curl wants to use his ultimate on score to kill him, KT's probably saying, sure. Then Arrow, Nagne, and Someday are going to be able to do work, so... I can see the logic behind it, not to mention with the Cinder Hulk and the Mercury Treads, it will be hard for Crow to one-shot him anyway. I also have to mention the frontline power of KT and how interesting it makes these mid to late game fights. Because if Someday and Score get Whoa. to a tanky enough point where an Ash Arrow will not kill them, and if Pickaboo can complete the McHales, the lack of frontline for the Ku Tigers will create incredibly difficult teamfight situations for Ku. Late game Fiora, as strong as you can get, if you're not finding the right initiations in a teamfight and you can't get through the other team's tank line, you become extremely ineffective. Enough. Well, Ku just wants their blue buff right now. They're not going to get oh, it, though. Dear. Went over to Arrow, able to steal it with that Ren. Meanwhile, mid tier two goes down in favor of KT. They got the turret. Can Ku punish this at all? Doesn't look like it. Looks like they just have to defend their inhibitor turret. These event horizons I, haven't really impressed me from Kuro this I game. Agree. He's had a couple of good ones, but he seems to be throwing it down too early uh, and not really considering the rest of the crowd control on his team because yeah. that one spell is incredibly crucial to how they're going to team fight or even defend these towers. Positioning does seem off a bit. KT going after that. Tier two down in bottom now. And Ku really had everything going for them. Yeah. That is, fight over the third dragon turned it all around. Ku is right now trying to defend without the Ash Arrow, so there's no good threat of them initiating. Their split push pressure has uh, all but died at this point because it seems like someday, especially at level 16, 
currently has the power spike over the five kill smeb, so they can't send him safely over in that direction. Uh, KT has really taken control of this game off of that dragon and then Baron. Yeah, Spem has had to itemize a bit awkwardly for MR, however, in this particular game, which is a little bit rough if we're talking about that split push one-on-one uh, -on -one between Someday and uh, and Smeb with Fiora versus Darius. So we'll have to keep track of how that's going to go. Does finally buy a chain vest. So that should be a little bit more helpful. And KT, looks like they just want to push the lanes out. They recalled early, stopped the siege. They really need to set up for this dragon. Yeah, that's just it. I mean, it's only 35 seconds or so until that next dragon comes up. So if the waves aren't pushing your favor, you're going to have a lot of... Uh, a lot of trouble trying to secure it. And I do want to point out the change in strategy mid-game here by KT. Uh, they swapped to a upgraded warding trinket on Nogne to get better vision. <laughs> there we go. And then he also <laughs> bought green wards on top of that. So he, the warding trinket itself was enough to reach your ward cap. He's only buying the green wards to then replace his own wards on the map and reposition because it is so important that Ku doesn't get a surprise initiation on, on yeah. KT right now. That's the only way they get back into the game. They're trying, hiding in that brush for a moment. Gonna clear some wards out. They want that third dragon, or fourth dragon, or their third dragon stack, that is. Uh, this game could still end. I mean, it's not that much of a gold difference at this stage, and yeah. one good arrow from Prey can really turn things around and open up this match. It's a close game. If Ku gets the fight they want, it could end right there, but the same could be said for KT, and I feel like we're seeing a lot of what we saw in that last best of five that we saw in the semifinals for champion summer between these two teams. Yeah, very tight, tight games. Yeah. The evenly contested. KT just trying to get the control over the mid and the bottom side right now. They've got great wards in the bottom for LeBlanc right now to keep split pushing up, so Nogne will feel very safe. And Ku just gonna back right off as the waves start to hit their tier twos. Pretty much. I'm wondering how much no. AP Kuro has right now, how much he's been able to well, build over the course of the Let game. Let me tell you. Find out. 700 is the oh, answer. Yeah. He has gained lower two, than I would have expected. He's gained 200 from his uh, stacking as of now. Uh, and he's also gone for the death cap early, which uh, many consider to be the suboptimal build. You get so much bonus AP, you almost want to go void staff second item. Yeah. But instead, he's just going for the big numbers. Interesting. Well, Koo going for the tier two down in mid lane here. KT may try to go on to this, though, someday back. That's a teleport. That teleport. He's coming in. Ku Tiger's on the run already. Teleport from Nagne as well. Someday, someday. trying to flank, trying to bottle in the Ku Tiger. Smeb goes in on the score. He's going to get turned on immediately, though. Pops that ultimate on the score. Can't get the kill, can't get the heal. Pickaboo in the mid lane. There's a kill for Arrow now. Score goes down, or rather, Smeb goes down. Someday, in the team, all over the Ku Tigers. There's the ult, and here come the resets. Flash with the apprehend as well. Nice grab on the Kuro from Pickaboo. And this fight is all KT. Triple kill already for Nogne. Yeah, KT completely steamrolls Ku in that straight up engagement. Well, they had good flanks uh, that exposed the event horizon early from Kuro, and then Ku really just had no chance against the power of this KT composition. Right Someday now. just rolling in with the home guards. That's been a specialty of Someday for a long time. Oh, Great yeah. TP flanks, finds it again, baits out the event horizon. And there's no more defense for Ku. They try and split, but this is going to be the end of the game. That's right. Hojin doing everything he can, but the death timers are just too long. And there goes the Nexus. Game one goes to KT Rolster. GG. Very competitive game. Back oh, and yeah. forth there. That one fight at Dragon got KT back in it after they made some mistakes in the early game, started to fall behind in kills. And you could see Ku did everything they could to try and control someday. Yeah, it really felt like for about the first 20 minutes of this game, Ku was playing their composition exactly how they intended. But then after that point, as we actually saw many times during the group stages, KT found that one mistake the opponent made and then never relented the advantage gained off of that fight. After the dragon fight, Ku really had no chance, it felt like. Yeah, and I mean, it was still competitive to the end. If they would have had that miraculous team fight if they would have had that astro mm -hmm. that they wanted maybe they could have team fought their way back into the game but i think we're in for a very good series here game one already looking pretty close and i've got a feeling this one certainly could go the distance i had that my questions about that tp leblanc but honestly when they needed those flanks in the late game they were able to actually pick them up mm -hmm. had some misfires but again you're like you're saying after that dragon fight it really felt like 
KT figured out what they had to do to win that game, yeah. they were never going to kind of attack from one side again and instead setting up, of course, Sunday's uh, teleports and just drawing out the abilities they need. You only have hard CC on one front, and you've got 